I've had a bunch of questions about kind of starting things and 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 building things. And this had this question this morning from uh, Max Forsberg. Uh, would it be possible to hear your perspective process when it comes uh, coming up with a scenario for campaign level things like uh, in Left 4 Dead 2 and Anna Crucis that makes a level good? Um, making a level good is surprising um, because you don't know at first. But I can tell you the process that we've used in both places and what I've kind of learned along the ways. Uh, so first, this is this is assuming you've got the creatures, you've got your weapons, you've got your characters, you have an understanding of, of some part of all of that, right? Where you're not having to test all of that. And this is why for almost everything I've worked on is we've made a base level that says this is what things have to work on and then everything else is a variation of that. And we did that, you know, no mercy, in the first Love for Dead and went from there. So first for me, and I think for most people, is this the story of like what's happening in the world? Where are we, right? I would like to have really the high level kind of framing of things that doesn't have to be like super detail oriented. I'm not like, I just don't get into that kind of things. I like the bigger kind of picture that gives me space to think about things. And so for Love for Dead 2, for instance, we watch it go from CETA to, and no military to all military and no CETA and kind of see that response and kind of have that as a backdrop for all of the story. And there, that's a road trip, right? That is a road trip through the South. That is a road trip I've gone on from Savannah to New Orleans. Uh, it's fun. So for the Anacrucis, what we're doing there is we're saying we're on the edge of space. And what does that mean in reality when it's the first time you find aliens and your reaction and try to encompass that story in um, Lance's arc, where he was first entirely about himself, but then eventually he actually wants to warn Earth and wants to do the right thing, and he's kind of angry at the aliens. And again, it is, in both cases, super kind of broad and background, uh, right? And so then you start thinking about length. And you don't want every episode to be the same length. I think we we thought it that way in um, the original Left 4 Dead and learned that people want variation. And we wanted variation, right? And the original Left 4 Dead was just, if people don't know, is there is a rural map and a country map, or rural map and a city map. And you got to make choices originally in those. And the very first time we had it play tested at Valve, uh, we had two people from uh, in one, two people in the other choice. Yeah, you learn quickly. Uh, we were headstrong and weren't going to go any further during that play test. And so we just instead made two versions of each, right? Taking the elements from each path, essentially. And what that did was then give us the same set of levels, but in different locations. Um, so sorry, I put, made, put some notes down here for us. Uh, right, but so, so then we know like who's going to be there for us that's the thing we just know in these kind of games because it's gonna be all four people but you may have some npcs and the npcs were always kind of backfilled along the way when we just had to solve a problem you know i think at valve we made a lot of what we call talking doors where you never saw the character because we never spent the money on making the model or doing that whole process but you just heard them because the voice acting was the voice casting was pretty cheap um now for left for dead after we made one, we analyzed two, well, we, assume we, we analyzed one to make two, we analyzed the idea of a dictionary of spaces, of what spaces meant to people moving through it. And I took that into the Anacrusis, right? So a long haul with no open doors is super fast. A long haul with doors is a lot slower. In the Anacrusis, a long haul with doors and places to search for stuff because you can still keep finding new stuff for you, including Mata compilers, is even slower. And so we could actually make less track, call it track the, the actual distance. We can make less track and have people spend more time in it. So we kind of got more value out of the track. Um, I remember at one point in Half-Life 2, Episode 2, someone came up with a dollar amount of how much each like 100 feet of track actually costs to make because that was very crafted. Here it's less crafted because you don't know what's going to happen on top of it, but you still think of it that way of like spaces. And I think this is one part admittedly in uh, the Anacrusis that while we can find players and expand players' vision in where they go, I think we make too many big boxes and then build inside of those big boxes versus making uh, bespoke 
kind of channels. I mean, there, we, we, we definitely mess it up or mix it up some with like the crew quarters curves and all of that. But I wish we would have done some more of that because there's some fun of being very cramped and then very expanded. You know, I think if you play the Left 4 Dead series, you'll often see uh, just go way off the path. And you'll realize, oh my God, there's all this stuff out here. There's all these things out here. There's all these items you can find, but you just don't need them. So you don't ever go out there, but there's all that built out because you need spaces for everything else to spawn and come in. Um, and then, so, you know, you, we, we kind of take that and start thinking of the space. And then at Val, we would whiteboard uh, kind of the top level and where crescendo events would happen. And like, what would be the fun thing? For the Anacrusis, we didn't exactly whiteboard it, but... Uh, the level designers would come and draw and kind of like make a pitch for it, which is similar, same, same idea. It's just, we were off and remote. And so it was different, right? There's something fun about sitting in front of a whiteboard and seeing somebody who's a great artist, you know, sketch out a level. There's some that hung up on those walls forever because people hated to take them down because they're so beautiful, right? But it's just give the really, really rough representation because it's kind of like, well, you can walk through here. It's through a city. There's some side streets here. There's an alley. You're not you're not representing it exactly, but you're just kind of making a big kind of guess at it. And then it becomes a crescendo event. So originally Left 4 Dead had no crescendo and events in it. And it was very, um, just fatiguing. You were doing the same thing all the time. You never had a chance where you had agency to take over timing and, and control. And so I still remember Phil Co, uh, one of the level designers, super talented guy, uh, created one in No Mercy right by the hospital, like the hospital, the side of the hospital broke in. And that started the first conversation about this that still reigns today. Is it better to have the crescendo event early in a map where you fail and you restart? Or is it better to have it at the end where it adds a lot of excitement and kind of like thrill of are we going to make it or not? It really depends. And I think you got to kind of mix it up. Um, but it's always like you have just some, in both these games, there's some some nod to noises or some activities going to bring bring people in different reasons for both in each but that's still the idea for the anacrusis we also took it because we learned this in love for dead 2 that sometimes you don't need a full-on crescendo event to still have that breaking up for the players so sometimes it could be simple as simple as opening a door that's going to have kind of a different effect where you're going to see like a different visual and have a different um a kind of a play experience or we have like a longer in episode two we kind of have a longer run where you're under constant attack kind of you get breaks because we always want to give you breaks um and mixing it up but so like we figure out those kind of things and then we get a, the white box version of it um and that's just no textures no art now some some level designers like just to have textures uh, Dario Casali over at Valve would, man, the ugliest ground texture of the Source engine would just always be what he chose. I have no idea why. Uh, it always felt like that. But he would just start there. But like, so some, so it's it's really to the level designer's preference. And that's neither good nor bad. But they would sometimes just be pure orange and white box. Or it would be some texture, whatever, really loose texture. But they weren't trying to art it. We have artists who do that and they have an understanding of that, right? But it is at that point that you can let people play it. And so first the team plays it and you're like, this is bad here. This is good. I don't know where to go. Um, probably the biggest confusion always is about um, pathing and where to go. Uh, and this is where having Left 4 Dead's be on earth made it a lot easier because you have an understanding of how streets work. You have an understanding of cross streets and alleys and all of that where in the anacrusis we were introducing you a spaceship and spaceships are not consistent across all of sci-fi so you kind of have to introduce people to what your spaceship is and the rules around your spaceship um and you know that sometimes i'd have characters call that out and make fun out of it kind of and the same thing i did with love for dead right um francis's i hate things literally came from me hating a piece of art that was in the map because what'll happen as we start doing this and they start going through as you start arting up these maps. And sometimes you find out that our choices will have a big negative effect in the sense of that you get lost. They add a lot of noise to it. And if you have the, and I think that's why like people like Dario and stuff always put in textures so that you had something you were already losing um, focus in. 
um, because it's really easy to navigate sometimes in white and orange because it's really clear. Um, but so as you start adding art in, people start getting confused. They start getting lost and you have to do more often lighting's the, the trick or whatever. You know, a million times we've done a bunch of things. There's never one solution to pathing in particular that will win. It's always multiple things. But I've done this a bunch of times where did you know, like in um, the finale of The Parish in Left 4 Dead 2, all the cars are facing the way you need to go. Um, or in the Anacrusis in that episode two, where you are on the long run, um, all the lighting is actually telling you which way to go. People still sometimes not pick up those clues, right? And you'll do a lot of clues like that. Some people will get it. Some people will get that without thinking about it. Um, and then some people just won't pick it up. Um, and you know, that's, that's kind of a interesting thing that you learn. I th thought, always thought for, uh, episode two, uh, hard rate or excuse me. Yeah. Not episode two, excuse me. Uh, for love for dead two, uh, the hard rain episode, which was done by, uh, Ido who runs, uh, the counter strike team now, uh, was interesting because we had this problem of you had to make the path be understandable going one way. And then you came back and also you had this water and all this other happening right in the darkness and lightning and all these storms happening. And so you were actually going through the same track, but it was radically different to you. And the fun thing there is they did really nice work with where they laid out the ladders and everything where you just don't notice them when you're going into the, into pick up the cans of gas, but you see them when you're coming out and you can use them. And it's just beautifully done. That that's, that's that team doing that. Right. And that was just a lot of play testing because through all of this, you iterate, play test, iterate, play test, iterate, play test. And at some point you're like, hey, we're in a good spot. Let's actually bring people from outside. So a little secret of Valve, man, if you're a nice person and you talk with them, um, I don't know how you do it these days. People would just mail us or whatever. We would invite you in to play all the time. You would see secret stuff. So many people saw the end of Portal 2 before we sh shipped it and no one ever talked about it. But it's just literally like just, we need people to play test it because we in our heads understand it. And you know, for something like at Valve or in Left 4 Dead 2, there's 45 people. That means you get 10 groups to take, go through it that have never seen it, kind of. You get other people at the company to go through it. But there's a point you want to have somebody who has no concept for it to go through it and play it. And you just keep iterating on it. And then at some point you say it's done. And that's its own skill, right? Because you really want to say, okay, people understand. People have gotten it. We've gotten all the art in. Right, because our teams kind of schedule out all the things they're going to put in, and then sometimes while they're doing that, they'll think of fun little things. Like I think as John Guthrie went through in um, Left 4 Dead 2 when you go to the amusement park, and all the weird little little like games and all of that came through from his madness, and then the artists, you know, um, filled that out and 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 kind of tied that all together. So you're still fussing with that a little bit, but you always have to be going on to the next thing and have an understanding with that. So often like the art team's working on, they're working on multiple levels together because some of it's finished, some of it's start. Um, and this is where I think Hammer and how I'm used to working there was great because the art team and the level design was tied in together in one. For the Anacrusis, um, our, our level designers had come from id where they use these mod tool mod tool mud tool mud box uh to design the levels and then integrate it into uh, unreal and we had we lost some time in there where as the art team took it over that iteration process there would be some point where we had to stop and be like the level's not going to be playable for a little bit um and so you know even if you are a solo dev working on your own play your stuff play your stuff, you're going to understand it. And that's good, right? Like if you're confused, you're lost, you're bad, right? So you want to, you want to, you're not, you're bad, but it's bad. Uh, so you want to get outside people in, but I think people underestimate or discount just your team playing it and getting your team to be able to honestly discuss and give feedback on it. So even if there's two of you, um, being able to honestly talk to each other uh, about, hey, this was bad. I didn't like this change. Hey, I had a problem here. And the good thing is if you're playing it together, this is the best thing of the co-op game. You have that experience together and there's no there's no hiding what's going on. You can give that feedback because you're like, hey, dude, I'm stuck here. You can't reach me. This is a bug. 
right? Um, and so that is a really nice thing. And I really still like uh, when we play test and, and iterate with outside play testers, we do this at uh, Stray Bombay as well, is watching those people play together and make that an event for your team. Make that like an exciting thing where you all get to watch. Now the best ones are if you would actually watch all people and then talk independently where they can't hear what you're saying. At Valve, uh, when we were doing Left 4 Dead 2 and we had, uh, or excuse me, Left 4 Dead 1, we had teams up in, in Seattle and Southern California. We had to do it remotely. And that's where I discovered this wonderful thing of you let people get some beer, have some pizza, watch somebody else play. And just your guard comes down and you have more honest discussions about um, what's going on. And this is really important to be able to give feedback. Um, that is like the hardest thing on small teams. The hardest thing that I had for Stray Bombay and Nana Cruces was because I would feel like, well, I'm the boss. Uh, what I say has got more weight. I've got to be careful how I talk because someone's going to, like some people could take feedback and some people can't. In the sense, not good or bad, but like from me, right? And so learning of how to talk with everybody is the thing you have to do because you have to be able to give that feedback and you want to be able to solicit that. And the best level designers will go out of their way to poke and prod people to give them all the feedback so they have an understanding and it's just not them. Because nobody knows, nobody who makes the levels themselves will ever know if it's good or bad until you get other people playing it. And that's how you find out because that's that's right. You're making it for them. You're making it for them to consume it and be able to play through it. And so, yeah, that is pretty much the process. That is a process I think for most teams where you fall down is a lot of teams don't play test their own stuff. They don't iterate. They say we're done. And that iteration process is really important because remember iterating means sometimes something didn't work and you yank it. Um, and sometimes it means you make it better, but it doesn't mean you take wholesale parts of it and throw it out and start again, right? That is, that is a young designer mistake I see often where you give them feedback on a section and you go back and play it and it's entirely different. And you're like, oh dude, this just really needed some, some like adjustment. This didn't, this didn't, you didn't need to throw this whole thing out. And once you throw the whole thing out, you're not iterating anymore. You're starting from zero again. And the idea would be is every time you play test, every time you iterate, you're making it that much better. And you're totally getting it towards like, hey, it's a 10. This is great. We can ship it. Where if you throw things out, you're starting from zero again. And it's just a nightmare. Um, so yeah, actually, I, I forgot about that. There, I've definitely run into that a lot with younger level designers who... Um, he or she just doesn't understand the iteration process. And I've now learned to talk about that iteration process with them early on about that. But yeah, that is the process. Um, man, I love, I love the whiteboarding, figuring out, talking about where it's going to go and what's going to happen. And then as the person who doesn't create the levels, getting to jump in and play it and have that moment of like, oh, this is so good. I think I've said it before, but like Left 4 Dead 2 started with the Parish Bridge talking with Randy Lundeen about wanting to do a crescendo or finale that that you had a move like that. And um, he did the setup for it and the work before even any of the engineers came and made it really, really work. And it's just like so much fun, that moment you jump in and you go, oh, this idea was a good idea. This is totally gonna work. You know, and then of course the brilliance of the people you're working with making whatever your idea is a hundred times better. Um, so yeah. And hey, if you're making stuff, if you need playtesters, because it's often hard when you're a young team looking for playtesters, stop by our Discord, discord.gg slash Bombay. We have a channel specifically for you to ask for playtesters. They can jump in, they'll play, we'll play together, we'll play for a game night. Like, we do that all the time and love to do that. It's fun to see stuff as people are working on it and going towards shipping. So there you go. A little bit longer of that one. Uh, hopefully not too babbly. I did have notes. I kind of stuck with them, I think. Try not to poop. All right, I'm gonna get into my recording problems, but there you go.